Uh, there's a video by a nice by a nice lad named Beller Beller Bell Bell you Bellular News like like cellular news. I've seen one of his videos. I haven't subscribed yet, so if this video is really good. I'll subscribe. Also, if it's really good, you guys should like the video. I'm gonna like the videos four days ago. It already has seventy thousand views. That's awesome. It says brands are ruining gaming, and I'm inclined to agree that. For the most part, they're at least making games kind of lose their identity, unless they're already just the brand hodgepodge. I think it works for a game like Fall Guys. I don't think it works for every other game out there. I actually hate every season whenever they have uh, Fortnite stuff that's not Fortnite. I hate all of the things. I hate Captain America Shield. I hate uh, the Tri Laser Rifle. I, I hated. What else? It was another stupid crossover. Uh, the water bending and air bending and earth bending and fire bending from the last Avatar. I, I hate it all. I'm a big crossover hater. Unless it's like Super Smash Brothers, get that crossover shit out of my face. Let's watch the video. Well, everyone, the Transformers are in Overwatch. WWE's in Call of Duty. X Defiant Data Mining has discovered anime weapon skins. Among Us has got a critical role crossover. I mean, we all get it, right? Deals equals money. But I think it's actually ruining a load of games. I mean, why are some games just not allowed to have a consistent theme anymore? Why does the Fortniteification of games mean? Hey, he called it what I call it. He called it Fortniteification. He called it Fortniteification. I said that. I, that was me. I said it first. I said it first. Of random brands and licensed purchase opportunities. It is exhausting. And honestly, it pulls me right out of video games. Just look at these yeah. Call of Duty shots. I uh -huh. remember when that was a fun as hell modern military. What in the, is that Skeletor? What the fuck? But don't worry, today we're going to go even further than was that. Was that Skeletor? The next generation of this phenomenon what the is fuck is that? a bit more spooky. So that's the problem. The signal to noise ratio of the visuals in our games are just gone to hell. And that's exactly what today's sponsor can help you cut through. Ah, nice. We don't skip sponsor spots, boys. Telegram, and it's a pretty serious story that risks being divisive, right? Being an opportunity for manipulation. So I immediately went to ground, right? I've got their vantage plan, and you can also get their vantage plan with 40% get their vantage plan with forty percent off. Value. So let's take a look at this story together. Here I can see a top-level view of how it's being covered. There's over a hundred sources, and while we're leaning a little bit towards the left, it is fairly balanced. And those ratings are coming from three independent news monitoring organizations. Oh, this is so like seeing like what political like spectrum something lands on. Okay, well right that's neat. That so easy and this lets me see how the story gets framed in different sides and of course for each media outlet i get to see their bias their factuality ratings and their ownership now on the left we i think that is very important if you look at news so that you're not jaded by news that's all far right or far left really all of the sides that's a good idea systems of telegram structure so that's helpful but then to see even more of the wider story i can go to the telegram interest page so here i can see everything with telegram and ground even surfaces blind spots as an example no right-leaning outlets have covered a kremlin ally accusing the u.s of orchestrating the arrest and then we also see very few left-leaning outlets covering other angles of the story and the thing is if i was just seeing a random headline shared in social media yeah you might well, you might miss that me being mm -hmm. would real be high with ground though I see the full picture. I'm going to say that's, that's how it works with the Olympics, view. right? And that's the thing. None of us have got Everyone was talking about that lady who people so said wasn't a lady. So amazing. Now, but no one was talking about the fact that there was a convicted rapist as a <laughs> Olympic uh, athlete. Nobody talked about that. And that means that ground set of tools and their mission, their value has never been more relevant. And if you want to use the tools that I use to analyze the news, well, you can go to ground.news forward slash Bellular. And over there, you'll get 40% That was a long ad. Limited access. That's okay. I hope he makes his money. Okay, licenses in gaming. This can go really good see go yeah like there's a crossover right there's a really old crossover marvel vs capcom but it didn't feel it felt like an event it didn't feel like commonplace back then soul caliber with the guest characters when it came to like link hey hachi spawn darth vader that's what this is the soul caliber four for no one who doesn't know i uh, hope you're doing your homework star killer yoda and then soul caliber five had Ezio. soul caliber six has a uh, role and tubi and palmaru Right, so Palmaru, Samurai, Shura. they have three different guest characters from three different franchises, right? But they don't feel out of place. I mean, they feel they feel like events. They don't feel like they're commonplace to the point where it's like, okay, what crossover are we getting next? Like, what's gonna happen? Like, keep it moving. Give me the next one. We don't really want that. What we see 
and it is perhaps about to get way, way, way worse because they have a deep, dark fantasy that we're all, uh, well, going towards. For the good side, like, look, there's a reason why we're all, or at least most of us, are hyped for Space Marine 2. And Space Marine 2 is made by a different developer to Space Marine 1 a decade later. Isn't that crazy? It only really happened because it is a licensed title. Hell, back in the day, do you remember playing 007 Nightfire? Lord yes! Rings, the Return of the King, all of those good glory days of yeah. licensed games. But of course, that's not really what we're talking about today. I remember 007 Nightfire, that game fucked. You, Playing a Space Marine, but not in Space Marine 2. No, you being a Space Marine in Call of Duty. In a squad what? with a guy in a giant animal costume, a WWE superstar, and one of the many variations what? of the price. All while you're ostensibly playing... Is that Fallout? A modern military... And that's shooter. Gundam? The core reason why this happens... What's is happening? ...obviously completely mercenary. It's user acquisition. We all know that games can end up spending equivalent amounts or even more on the marketing budget compared to the actual development for the game. It's something we're very aware with with, say, movies. And there's a simple reason for this. If you do not know about a game, none of that development cost is worth anything yeah, that's whatsoever true. because you haven't even seen it, which means you don't even know to buy it or play it. So keeping people around with a good game, that's vital to something actually succeeding. But... As we see on Steam, where it is littered with amazing games that deserve far higher player counts than they actually get, at the end of the day, you might have an amazingly retaining game, but only seven people know that it exists. And that like, that's sucks. the kind of thing that even here in YouTube, we've got to deal with. If we don't market a video correctly, it does not matter how good that video is. I mean, maybe you can get algorithm lucky, but basically your title and your thumbnail have got to be damn good. And I don't use thumbnails, and my titles are whack. I'm doomed to stay a small content creator forever. I think it's a little different in video games, though, because there's been, you know, small indie gems that just kind of blew up by word of mouth mostly. Right? There wasn't big, there wasn't big uh, advertisement for Undertale. That game just blew up because everyone was like, yo, this game's like a, this game's like a 10 out of 10. Like, you, everybody, look, man, just try, if you have a way to play it, play Undertale. Right? There was no big... Uh, marketing push for something like Stardew Valley. I'm talking about indies because I like indies. There's, there was no big push for something like Stardew Valley. It was just like, hey, this guy said he was going to make a game and he finally got to make it. He, he, we should check it out. They, they, oh, shit, this game's really fucking good. Damn, you know, and things like that, successes like that aren't the norm, but they prove that it, it can exist without brand deals, without having extra eyes exist on your game because of the fact that you threw in something or someone that doesn't really fit the motif or the universe of your game. I can think of a game that has like two crossover characters that are very popular in the indie space and it's an indie fighting game, but I don't think it helped this game success at all. Rivals of Aether 1 has Ori from Ori and the Blind Forest or Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I don't know which one was first. I'm not a real Ori fan. Don't shoot me. I'm sorry, but I just know the games exist and that people like them, that they're uh, uh, very popular. And Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is also in Rivals of Aether. I don't think those games, those characters sold the game more. They did make, you know, maybe the, the players of said games that were already kind of, like, popular but niche. Popular but not well-known, I guess. Like, indie darlings. They made those players think, oh, look at this cool little indie fighting game that has my favorite character. But I don't think it changed the biggest amount of player basing base shifting you know in or out of the game once those characters dropped a bunch of people didn't leave because oh no fucking guest characters and a bunch of people didn't start entering because oh yay guest characters right if it's done right if it's done well they just look like another part of the cast or another part of what the game is already trying to do that's why i say something like fall guys where fall guys you're just putting on suits it's not so awkward with a lot of these crossovers right like you see someone in like the sonic suit and you're like haha being dressed up as sonic right or you see someone dressed up as like the little mermaid i don't know if that exists but like you're like haha little mermaid skin that's so cool very funny but it's a little different when you see master chief fighting Geralt of rivia fighting kratos fighting Darth Vader, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm playing, oh, and Goku and Vegeta, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm playing Fortnite, I forgot, I where's the Fortnite characters at? And it reminds me of a saying that comes from the Silicon Valley, and it is that first-time founders focus on product, second-time founders focus on distribution, and that's why I'm talking about user acquisition. It's big business, and established IP makes it easier. That's why modern media is so littered with sequels, and reboots, and remakes, and re-somethings, and all of the stuff you are more likely to click or buy something that you've already seen and that's been established right if you're an assassin's creed fan you liked valhalla you liked mirage you liked syndicate and rogue or 
you liked Black Flag. We shouldn't go back any further than that because the other games were just way better, right? I think even Black Flag was... We can't even put Black Flag in this because Black Flag was amazing. Um, you liked the modern Assassin's Creed games and say you don't give a shit how J Japanese people feel or how modern media feels about Yasuke. Uh, you're going to buy Shadows. Because you're like, oh yeah, it's Assassin's Creed, cool. You liked Call of Duty uh black ops 5 or cold war whatever it was called you like to call of duty modern warfare 3 4 i don't know the names call of duty games man there's like 8 million of them okay you're more likely to pick up call of duty black ops 6 because there's a brand established with that that you already know because people have ran out of ideas i mean you can even look at revivals like say top gun maverick or even games like god of war and you can see the people god of war is a little different because it's very different from the original games of course so many creative ideas that don't get made it's not even a retelling like it's a whole new game i say the same thing about the rise of the tomb raider and shadow of the tomb raider games very different from the original tomb raiders because it's not worth marketing anything else that's why if you go to the comment section of any youtube channel you would honestly think that we are living in the dark ages of video games i think i think gaming is great right now yet if you're willing to tactical go breach wizards dude it's tactical breach wizards i know this game this is like a recent indie game that just came out yo you're a wizard and you're like playing a turn-based like tactical rpg and you're you're like a wizard with a gun and magical powers and you're fighting people with like just guns it kind of the idea of it kind of fucks if you like tactics games just saying marketing budgets you actually Look at that shit. are currently living in one of the best oh i've heard of this game games don't know what it's called though you might be very depressed about the state of big studio movies i totally understand that but you know what if you take a look at some of those lower budget indies there are people making absolutely incredible things but i do get the point sometimes you want something with a big budget you want something larger than life and you want it to not be shit. And that's the problem. Certain fantasies require a certain budget, and those fantasies have now been infiltrated by brands. So enter the live service game. You can be Apex Legends, and you can do 18 seasons of selling internally consistent skins for your game and make pretty good money. But what if the line doesn't go up enough? Well, how about you instead slap in the Buster Sword and see the numbers go crazy? That's okay. the thing audiences want what they already know okay. in many cases because it's i mean more risk and they understand buster sword you may not understand the value of a skin for a character you don't play in apex legends but you know what the buster sword you understand the value of that it's the buster sword but unlike licensed games live services can sell to and acquire everyone Ew, that's what the Aerith. that was so ugly brands. so if you're playing i'm glad she's dead what wwe well you can go for Nicki minaj maybe snoop dogg how about homelander lilith anarius or of course dollar Store. i'm sorry yeah, lilith really lilith is in and you know what the all of duty is? it's happy meals it's goddamn happy meals kids want to go to mcdonald's to get a happy meal and to get the, the toy, toy. Comes in the happy correct meal. and they want to do this half a dozen times to get all the toys in a given set take kinder eggs the kinder egg the very very dangerous european export that at one point was banned and in the, the u.s States. yeah well people want to buy the kinder eggs so they can get the collection of all the little toys yes this is a great thing where everybody wins and there are no negative externalities and that's basically the thing happy meals that's what a lot of modern video games are just want you to come back every week for a different toy or maybe okay. you're a bit like me and you just go dad mode and buy a chicken legend exact the problem is video games it's worse so let's talk about okay let's 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 see what he means by that have a consistency they have a target audience they don't compromise their own internal aesthetic and yes i am now talking about the internal aesthetic of a happy meal okay here's the thing i get what he's putting down they can actually be done fairly well as an example the lead concept artist for blizzard korea working on the transformers collaboration said it was quote the coolest gift i could give to my childhood self so on a time like that there will be passion there will be heart but i as a lapsed call of duty player because back in the day i played halo i played call of duty i played my rts games and i played world of warcraft that's what i did and there are times damn what a what a legend shooter goodness do you know what? I don't want to go into my Call of Duty where I maybe like the marketing or the aesthetic of um, all of that, uh, you know, Catherine Bigelow tactical stuff that they tried to do in the recent Modern Warfare games. I want that stuff, and I literally can't get that. Yeah, I will say that it breaks the immersion for people that like an IP. If you like an IP enough, yo, what's up? How you doing? If you like an IP enough, 
the the immersion is broken the more crossovers you see right if you like the ip uh, the i the ip and the idea of fortnite and you like jones you like commander reyes you like uh, uh, i don't know the fucking normal fortnite character that no one knows the names of right unless you've played save the world you like hope who's pretty popular to be fair her fit looks sick right she's one of the newer fortnite characters you like that that overarching story like might is you like oscar every time you see an anime skin, a superhero skin, or some other form of like, like a Peter Griffin crossover, it breaks the immersion of the fact that you're playing Fortnite. Right? But Fortnite's been doing it for so long that it feels natural. When Call of Duty hops on a bandwagon like this, after years and years and years of entries with no crossovers, with no brand collaboration, it feels as if you're being ripped out of your modern, your modern military arcade shooter and being thrown into... A toy box you're being thrown into a happy meal with no consistency you drop in and it gives you every toy for the past 20 years of mcdonald's happy meals and you open up one and it's a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh hello kitty toy and you open up another and it's optimus prime and then you open up a different one and it's fucking beetlejuice and it doesn't make any sense like it feels out of place it doesn't feel out of place at every game i like i said i'll stand on the fact that i think fall guys does it perfectly and it's totally fine in that game but it doesn't feel that way in every game. That because when I go into a match, I'm going to find a giant animal mascot and Homelander, and that just kind of ruins the feeling of playing the game. Now, Fortnite in particular got to where it is now, and so many games are obviously aping Fortnite. But here's the thing with Fortnite. The quality of work in Fortnite is often actually outstanding. Just, I know, people laugh about the dances in Fortnite, the actual animation there is really, really strong. But yeah, the thing I, I'll admit that, like, the animation looks good. The characters are, like, very faithfully recreated or they're given a positive, cool spin. Like, the Magneto skin had, like, a Wastelander Magneto skin where he kind of fit in in the world of Fortnite. And he looked really cool. And, you know, Captain America not being Captain America, being Captain Jonesy instead. You know, the, the characters look cool. And aesthetically, they're very pleasing. But now imagine every game trying to do that with the same amount of quality and love, it won't hit the same for every game. It won't stick the right way. Happy meal that is designed to hold brands within, well, Fortnite is designed to be a hodgepodge of big, probably Zoomer-friendly brand aesthetics. So it is brand soup, just like the Funko Pop, but maybe a little bit less horrific. Okay, that's a good way to put it, Funko Pops, yeah. That is that every person within the game becomes a walking billboard for purchase opportunities. And that brings me, dear viewer, Not to me. the cell. Do you remember the I don't use any of the crossover skins. I have War Machine because he's black, but I don't use the crossover skins. To buy. I mean, I don't think this is something that they do right now, but can you imagine the ultimate ghoulish horror hellscape where maybe you watch a television program on the Amazon Prime? And uh, when you do that, maybe you log into Call of Duty. Oh, they just happen to pair you with, uh, with skins that are from that brand. I'm not saying that's what's happening right now, but I think we all know that's all. That's a hellscape that could happen. I get it. See, the systems I get what he's putting down. Games ...are designed to make the customer the product that's being sold. And remember the saying, if it's free, then you are the product in some way. So free players provide the population needed to keep a game afloat, and then they're a captive audience that can be marketed to. And the more time they spend within a game, guess what? The more likely they are to start buying things. Correct. And so that's essentially how it goes. You have a you got to turn some of your players, players into payers. To. They Correct. will then be converted into stayers, and then from stayers to payers. Yep. And then oh, stay. Okay, my bad. Players to stayers to payers. My bad. Acquire new users and then generate revenue from the people who are already there. Uh, because obviously, that's how you're going to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, these AAA live services are businesses, and this is amazing business sense. I mean, we can. Okay, if you do like a Hot Wheels crossover with, you know, Fortnite Rocket Racing or whatever it's called, I don't care. It fits in, it fits the aesthetic. It's no big deal. If you like put uh, Fast and Furious cars in rocket racing it fucking everyone knows what fast and furious is just don't just i i, I don't want to hear fucking dominic toretto shout for family right but as long as the crossovers make sense then it doesn't feel as if they're being forced or pushed on you and as long as they're not being forced and pushed on you in the way that he mentioned earlier and like a way that activision did where they want you to buy skins by showing you people with cool skins or skins that advertise well to your demographic uh, I mean, we're, we're Gucci. As long as that's not happening, and as long as the 
crossovers don't super duper break the immersion of what's going on eh, i could care less and all protest marketing fast food that's unhealthy to kids but here's the thing about the happy meal it's an amazingly well-conceived product it's one that's lasted decades because that's true it's just well designed i think the happy meal has been around like 35 years exactly that's crazy here. that's older than me in cases there is a strange form of product market fit just that it's not really the traditional way in which we see a product where maybe a product solves a problem for a user no it is more what we could call a product identity fit it is really no different to how these things called clothes product, product identity product. okay like a skin but in real life so you'll see a lot of clothing brands that are all the time doing collaborations. What the with... fuck? There's a Burger King Call of Duty collab. You know, that's really not that bad. He's just wearing a shirt that says Burger King or Burger Town on it. I mean, it's fine. Other brands. It's exactly like that. Here's the problem. And my burger sounds so good right now. Bad. And you know what? It is pretty bad. It could be worse in some other ways. In a lot of other regions, pay to win is actually a normalized thing. And that means that the free players are just bizarre little peon creatures that exist to uh, sort of serve the whims of those who've got money. Thing is, though, it's time to talk about the deep, dark fantasy. I know you guys have been waiting for it. Okay, let's let's see. To the Shell Island. I mean, look, when I was playing a petroleum-related island game, and I was getting at least Lego Island. In this case, no, I'm talking about Shell Island in Fortnite. And when I say Shell, yes, I mean what that. the fuck? Shell, shell like the different. gasoline company? Shell made. Oh, you know what? I think Whataburger also made a map in Fortnite. Whataburger, the burger restaurant, the Texas-based burger restaurant. That dystopian. <laughs> I never really thought about it like that. That's kind of that's a little dystopian. <laughs> they say. Explore nice marketing our custom island in Fortnite. Get ready for an adventure that's all about speed, acceleration, and performance powered by Shell V Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. That's one example, rather horrible. Another one is Gucci Town and Roblox. Gucci, Gucci Town and Roblox. Hold on, people playing Roblox aren't even old enough to like know what a Gucci or Prada bag is. Why are you? <laughs> well, I guess you got to get them started young, right? Like your six-year-old daughter's playing Roblox and someone's like, yo, I'm inviting you to the Gucci world. Pull up. And then they're seven or eight years old and they're like, mom, I want a Gucci bag for my birthday. And now their mom has to take out a bank loan to get their eight-year-old daughter a Gucci bag. Truly dystopian. That's pretty good. It's all about the Gucci fashion brand by mini games. <laughs> so the mini games. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, there's something to do there. Talking about concepts like your games, how game platform roblox became a corporate marketing playground damn okay islands of the roblox experiences as okay adver games and uh you maybe remember adver games as an example we used to get games in our cereal boxes and then happy meals there was a burger king game it was legit a long time ago i cannot remember how long ago it was. i think it was like xbox or xbox 360. i swear to you there was a burger king game that you could get from a burger king meal i remember this distinctly it would come with uh, this strange relic called a compact disc now here's where it gets fun this is from yusuf ush who is a associate professor of marketing at bay's business school he says even though we are exposed to thousands of ads every day, we don't remember many of them. Advert games, by integrating the brand message into the game, bypass these filters more effectively. That's true, because I remember the Burger King game, and I don't remember most Burger King advertisements, because I don't think about Burger King on a regular basis. I love me a good burger, but I don't think about Burger King on a regular basis. I don't think about any of the burger chain restaurants really on a regular basis for any of their ads. I can remember the Jack in the Box guy, but do I remember what he says? No. But the Burger King game, I can explicitly remember. It is in my noggin because I'm a gamer. So it got me good. Damn, that's fucked up. Effectively, They're living in my head rent free. And as pointed out further on in this article, these are a type of advert that is actually wildly unregulated. Again, They're not regulated? a space that ostensibly is designed for children. I don't know about the state, but I know that, uh, say, in the UK, if you're going to be marketing to kids, there are loads of regulations. regulations? That yeah, that makes sense. Can and uh, cannot do. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of realized, hang on a second, let's... Um, let's protect the kids a little bit when they're impressionable and because of all of this it's no surprise that this stuff is incredibly effective so there's a speaker brand called jbl from samsung oh i've heard of jbl yeah. roblox world in february what that the roblox world has 1.4 million players what so in the fuck real different because look 1.4 million impressions on an advert doesn't really matter that much here's the crazy bit again i go to a quote from the article with an average playtime of more than six minutes its engagement metrics are several orders of magnitude greater than the two or three seconds a person typically spends reading, reading a social, social media, media post. Uh, wait, how, uh, wait, how many how many more magnitudes 
Like, how much more effective is it? I wish that there was a hard number here. Because if you play an island for six minutes, like, first of all, you're giving them way more of your time and attention. But I want to know how much more they're selling roughly because of something like a Roblox world. That's crazy. Two or three seconds a person typically spends reading a social media post or perhaps... I'm also a skull candy guy, so JBL's never going to get me. Get fucked. So the thing here is, none of this is really new. This is being... Not like a Budweiser game. Arcades. As an example, the 1984 classic Tapper, which was sponsored by Budweiser. And hell, there's relics from that era that people are real nostalgic for. I mean, Pepsi Man. Chance oh, Pepsi Master, Man. Uh, the Sneak King tie-in for Burger King. The Sneak King, that's what it was called. Sneak King. Oh, my gosh. The idea of live adverts inside sports titles and the likes of, say, burnout games for decades at this point. As soon as there is a new medium, well, there's opportunists looking to slap a brand on the side of it. So it then leaves us in an interesting place because if it funds development, then it gets games out the door. Maybe that ends up being uh, the Tapper game or like a sports game. At least in those things, it kind of makes sense thematically. But the problem we're now having... We've always had advertisements and brands in games, just, just to clarify, but it's significantly more of a problem and more front-facing now. Because if you played an old racing game... There was billboards and stuff like a, like maybe not a Gran Turismo, but there were some racing games that had real world advertisements on the fucking billboards and on the sides of the buildings. Like you would see actual IRL brands. Those were paid spots. They were like, hey, like give us two billboards in the video game. We'll throw you $20,000. Maybe not even that much, right? Probably a smaller amount than that because for something like a racing game or a, a sports game or an extreme sports game like a Tony Hawk or a, a, a snowboarding, you're going to fly by those things pretty fast. But if you're ever stopping and taking a hold of the world and just letting it all in, you'll see things like that. And it will, as someone who enjoys the medium of video games, probably stick with you more than some 30 second commercial on TV in between you watching programs. Is the proliferation of live services and the current gold rush of user generated content spaces means that the grift is just becoming more clear. These games are just turning into advertising platforms. And when advertising is the core business model, it actually means that the customer becomes the product, not the art. If you want succinctly put an honest. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that I believe that to a certain degree, depending on the game, right? If you look at a game like Multiverses, they made sure that their tie-ins, at least a few of them, have coincided with movies that are coming out. They brought in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice comes out this week. They brought in Black Adam during the beta. Black Adam released like a month. The movie released like a month later, right? They didn't give us the character that we really wanted. They gave us a character that would push some agenda or some product on us later. They'd be like, oh, yeah, man, I played Black Adam. I got him for free in Multiverse. He was so fun. Oh, Black Adam movie, The Rock. I know that guy. Let me go watch it, you know? That's kind of the feeling that they're going for, what they're trying to get out of people. It doesn't work on everyone, but there's probably enough people that it works on that these tactics are clearly being utilized this way on purpose. Honestly, it is, it is totally credit to, uh, to Connor who led the charge on this video. Um, I, I think that's perfect. If you want to know, like, why does Overwatch 2 just sort of not have something, you know, it's that. It's that you are the product in this free-to-play game not the art and i think a lot of people who loved overwatch for kind of like what it meant what it represented those are the sorts of players that were probably some of the earlier ones to leave in disgust you know there's a game i can think of that's coming out soon and i don't know how they're gonna do brand deals how are you gonna put brand deals in marvel rivals like speaking of overwatch right you could maybe Coincide character releases with new movie releases or new Disney Plus TV show releases. But how do you put non Marvel brands and Marvel rivals? You might just have to find the right game so you never have to worry about brand deals. Thoughts? Thoughts? There we go. Saying that I was playing the old Call of Duty games for the art of them, although there were some great standout moments in many of those Call of Duty campaigns, absolutely. But I did want a cohesive experience. Yeah, you didn't want to have your immersion broken. Correct. Is one of the things of Modern Warfare 2019 that really grabbed me. The guns just sounded so real, the way the recoil knocked about the place. It was just so satisfying. And then queue a few months, and it's full of brands, and it no longer feels like a cohesive product should be and i think that is the underlying sense of betrayal that is people who have been deep in this medium for decades we feel so there you go hope you enjoyed today's video i will see you 
on the Shell Islands where we can relax and take a nice sip of V Power Ultra Gasoline together. A nice sip? Day. I'll see you next time. A nice sip? I'm not sipping on any gasoline. You couldn't pay me. Just like I wouldn't drink. Uh, I'm going to like this video. This video is really good. I think thinking about uh, video games as an older person, right? Like I'm 29 years old. That guy looks like he's probably 30, maybe pushing 30. Uh, so we've been gaming for a long time, and it feels as if the market uh, also, I'll, I'll try to link the video in the YouTube. I'll try. Uh, thinking about this medium from like an old man perspective, where outside of branded video games or licensed video games, there was no adverts or there was very little advertisements plastered all over everything. So watching a lot of the medium just straight up become advertisements is jarring and I guess off-putting to like a pretty significant amount of older players, right? When you think about it, we're not going to be playing games forever, though, is the problem. We're eventually going to stop playing games or start playing older things and working on retro collections and things like that. So in that way, as long as these advertisements are hitting with the crowd that they're supposed to be, they're not so bad as long as the immersion isn't broken for the players who are continuing to enjoy the video game, right? Like, I will say, seeing Nicki Minaj or Rhea Ripley in Call of Duty, for me, someone who played a lot of Advanced War, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, like, actual Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and Modern Warfare 2, seeing those characters in Call of Duty, like, thinking just the idea of them is so weird. It's very strange. I named Call of Duties that came out a decade ago. So I'm clearly not the target audience for these kinds of crossovers. Right, another game where crossovers work just fine, I mentioned uh, Fall Guys, is Brawlhalla, right? Brawlhalla is a really small game, maybe, sure, when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. But it's a game where I've never really said, oh, man, these are like brand deals and crossovers of like Rayman and Shovel Knight and Adventure Time and Laura Croft and wrestling. And like, there's tons of crossovers in Brawlhalla. And I've never once thought of something in them as like, oh, this kind of just like ruins the immersion. It's so cartoony looking. And I think there's even like The Walking Dead. It's so cartoony looking and just whimsical that it doesn't have a style where that style can be broken by something. By something like that, right? Um, like I think of Call of Duty and I'm like, okay, well, what if they put like a modern military movie into Call of Duty? Right, like I, I can't think of a modern military movie, but it would make sense. It would be like, oh, this is an immersion breaking. Or say they come out with a new um, DC inspired game or a new DC game, right? Where it's like a Batman game or a Superman game, and they add in a movie tie-in Joker and Harley Quinn with the new movie. It wouldn't feel as impactful. It wouldn't feel as um, immersion breaking as random happy meal toy feeling right it would make more sense and i think brand deals are fine as long as they make sense and hit with the core audience i think this video is really good but i think that's like the major point that he missed is not everyone is going to feel this way about brand deals brand deals are clearly working in certain games because of the fact that people like them right it's not that they just get used to them and they're being held hostage by like the idea of them it's that people actually like them. It's that it's a form of advertising that speaks more to the people who they should be advertising to. Why are you advertising to a gamer in a fucking TV commercial? That gamer is not watching TV. How the fuck is he going to see that commercial? No, throw your commercial well in his video game. Make sure it's done well, right? Oh, you want to you wanna fucking promote wrestling and make sure people keep watching? Throw Rhea Ripley in Call of Duty. Make sure she looks hot, though, because if she doesn't, people are going to be like, ew, this is what Rhea Ripley looks like. They're not going to watch it. They're going to be like, I'm not watching wrestling. Hell no. Great video, though. A lot of amazing points and really laid out like a lot of the kind of more devious and little-known facts about the way that these brands and brand deals work. And I think that it was worth the watch, for sure.